All right, guys, happy Tuesday. Back for some more of chapter three, lesson one, talking about how electric charges actually flow. Yesterday, we talked about um, atoms, which are the building blocks for everything in the world. The pen, pencil, paper, me and you, this desk I'm sitting at, the laptop I'm using, everything is made up of atoms. We talked about um, how those atoms can have positive charges, negative charges, or no charge at all. And then that when those become unbalanced, that causes that static electricity. Um, and then we talked about conductors and insulators. Conductors are what? Good, yes, conductors allow electricity to move easily, and insulators are good. They are materials that do not allow electricity to flow easily. So today, we're gonna finish up with this lesson and be talking about circuits. So for a current to be able to flow, electric charges are going to have to be able to complete a loop or a circuit. So, if it, there is any gap or any break in the circuit, that electricity cannot flow. So if we're going, we're going, and then there's a break right here, that electricity is not going to be able to flow. It has to be able to go continuously through that loop or through that circuit. A cut wire or a switch that is flipped off, those are examples of breaks. So when you turn that switch off, you have put a gap in that circuit and that's why the lights go off because that electricity is not able to flow anymore. When that electricity is not able to flow through that open circuit, that um, it's not able to do what it needs to do. So a circuit is open if it has at least one break. So you've got to think of it like this. You've got to think of it like we've got a loop and so if it looks like this it is open like this that means that that electricity can flow this way uh -oh. it can flow like this but then once it comes here it can't just jump like you're jumping over a puddle it's got to be able to go continuously through that circuit so it's considered open if there's a gap because obviously there's an open space right here so circuits that are open we cannot the uh, we can't complete that circuit and that electricity is not going to flow which means the lights will be off or the sound will be off or the tv is going to be off or whatever you're trying to turn on is not going to work because that electric that circuit has a gap in it it's open a circuit is closed if it has no break so in order to close this circuit all we have to do is finish it and turn that light switch on and once that light switch gets turned on that gap is closed and that electricity is able to flow all the way through it and leave those lights on or the tv running or keep your phone charging all right so closed means obviously no breaks that circle is closed that's thinking like a door closing and then it's open if there's a gap in it Closed means electricity is flowing, open means it's not. All right, there are several, several, several parts to a circuit. It's energy sources provide the energy to move the electric charges, okay? Batteries, electrical outlets where you plug things into, those are energy sources. So when you put batteries in a flashlight or in an Xbox remote, or if you plug your phone charger in, those are considered the energy source. That is where you are getting your power to be able to allow that electricity to start going. Then there's wires, because that's what the electricity flows through, okay? This is my charger cord to my laptop, okay? Once I plug this part into my laptop, that electricity is going to start flowing through the wires inside of this rubber coating and allow my laptop to charge. Okay, so the wires are in here and that's gonna let that electricity flow to my laptop to charge it. It also has resistors, which are the things that transform energy to other, um, transform the energy coming through the wire, the electrical energy, to different forms of energy. And then they also use that energy that flows through the circuit. So if I turn a lamp on, 
a lamp would be a resistor a light bulb would be a resistor um any machine that you plug in this pencil sharpener over here that i've got would be a resistor because it's using that energy a tv would be a resistor because it is using that electrical energy and transforming it into sound energy and light energy okay then um, a circuit's always got to have a switch so it's or may have a switch not always so light switches um the switches on the lamp switches allow that current to kind of go on and off open and close open and close all right here is a picture of parts of an electrical circuit so we've got our energy source right here the battery then we have the wires which are carrying that electric current to the resistor here which is a light bulb that resistor that light bulb is using and transforming that electrical energy into what kind of energy what kind of energy does light bulb yes light energy then here's another resistor this clock that it's using that electrical energy to allow the hands on the clock to spin so the clock works we've got the switch over here to close the circuit because remember in order to have that electricity flowing it's got to be closed because if it's closed then there's no gaps and it can flow just like this okay so that switch closes the circuit to allow it to flow or opens it to stop the flow and then this light bulb wouldn't be on and this clock wouldn't be working either okay there are two types of circuits we're going to talk about today one is a series circuit a series circuit allows for an electric charge to flow in one path so this would be an example of a series circuit there is just one path for that electricity to flow and follow the entire time okay so when the power source is turned on the charged particles are going to flow through that wire in one direction in a single loop that's it there's no other way it can't come to a stop and turn left or turn right it's just going to go in that same path the entire time any break in that loop like a burnt out bulb or a missing bulb is going to stop that current okay so if you've got a string of lights and it's on a series circuit if one light bulb goes out or one light bulb is taken out it's all going to turn off none of it's going to work because that's that break when one bulb breaks that's going to act as that gap or that break in that circuit that doesn't allow that electricity to flow it's going to kind of act like a stop sign and then there are parallel circuits parallel circuits have two or more paths and i'm going to show you a picture in just a second of a parallel circuit um, so the electrical charges have more than one path to flow through which means that each path um, has kind of its own direction however they're always going to come back to that same energy source so they can go off and come this way or they can go off and go this way but they're both going to end up coming back to where they started okay the current that flows through one path does not flow through the other path so it can be going this way and one can be going this way but they're not going to like figure eight and go through each other's paths if one loop is broken the current's still going to flow through the other loop so think about a string of christmas lights so whenever you've got a string of christmas lights you bring them back out after they've been up in the attic all year or in storage all year and you unravel them and then you plug them in and to see how pretty they look and then you're like Ugh, this bulb's burnt out now one bulb might be burnt out or one section might be burnt out but is the whole strand of lights burnt out no not usually those are an example of a parallel circuit because that electricity is able to flow on more than one path which means that even though that one light bulb is out the other the other pathways allow for the electricity to still flow okay so here is a picture of both a series circuit and a parallel circuit and this is going to end our lesson for today so here you see when the series the series circuit we've got the energy source the power source the battery the energy is flowing through the wires to the light bulbs turning them on these are our resistors remember that resistor transforms that electrical energy and uses it so this is being transformed into light energy 
and it's flowing all the way through back to the power source. Now, what would happen if this middle light bulb was burnt out? Yeah, none of those lights would be working because once it got to here and it got to that missing light bulb, that electric current stops, which means that these other two lights go out with it. Now let's look over here at a parallel circuit. So we still have just the one energy source, the battery right here, and that electrical current is flowing. It's got one pathway here, one pathway here, and one pathway here. So notice though that they all come back to the same energy source. They just veer off and take different pathways. So because this light bulb is on a different pathway, this light bulb is on a different pathway, and this light bulb is on a different pathway, if this middle one is burnt out, because these two light bulbs are having an electric current come from a separate pathway, these two light bulbs will continue to stay on because their energy or their electric current does not flow on the same pathway as that middle light bulb. All right, guys, that is going to end our lesson for today. And it's also going to wrap up our lesson for chapter um, three, lesson one today. Please make sure, as always, you are checking your science folders daily. You are going to be having assignments. I don't want you to be missing anything. So make sure that you're reading the assignments and the directions carefully, completing them and hitting that submit button. Hitting submit is very important to, be get, to get the credit for doing the work. All right, guys, have a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of your week. And I will see you next time.